Hi, my name is Mitchell and this is a video. Django just recently posted their latest release, Django 3.0. Now with this new major version comes support for things like MariaDB, the start of asynchronous Django, exclusion constraints, filter expressions, enumerations for model field choices, and much, much more minor changes. Today, we'll be touching on just those larger changes, how they may impact you, and how you can utilize them in your projects. So, let's talk. Let's start off with the biggest one, ASCII support and asynchronous Django. This seems to be the main selling point for Django 3.0 and its future releases. Django are making a big push to natively support asynchronous functions, views, middleware, ORM, and more. In Django 3.0, asynchronous support is in its early stages and does not cover the entire application at all levels. Currently, this is limited to the outer handler layer, allowing things like asynchronous request routing. Let's look at an example of this that's been provided by Adam Johnson on a blog post he made earlier this year when reviewing the alpha release in September. As you can see here, on the outer application level, we can sort requests asynchronously based on their scope type to route either to your Django application, set using the get ASCII application function, which currently is basically our normal synchronous Django in an asynchronous ASCII wrapper. That said, more asynchronous support will be coming in future releases of Django. If the scope is a WebSocket request and not a general HTTP request, we can route to a WebSocket application, all of which is handled asynchronously. If you're interested in learning more about WebSockets in Django, look into either Channels, which is developed by the Django team, or Starlet, which proposes itself as a lighter and faster alternative. I've personally used Channels in the past with no major issues, and I have yet to test Starlet fully. If you would like to learn more about Django's async plans, Django's Andrew Goodwin has a very detailed post on their GitHub that covers everything related to asynchronous Django going into the future. Next up, we have a very simple and straightforward addition, support for MariaDB. MariaDB can now be used as your Django database by utilizing the MySQL backend as it is shared between them both. This means in your settings file, make sure to set your default database engine to django.db.backend.mysql. Read the MySQL Django notes for more details on how to configure this fully. Another addition in Django 3.0 is support for PostgreSQL's exclusion constraint. If you're not familiar, constraints are set at a model level to stop rows being inserted that match a specific query. An existing example would be your primary key, which has to be unique, and so the constraint would be that the row can't be inserted if the specific PK field has the same value as another row. Most of the time, this is your ID field. An exclusion constraint adds more options to your typical existing Django constraints, allowing more advanced checks, such as no two fields can overlap, like a date time range field, or no two fields can be different. It can achieve these more advanced checks without just running through every possible combination by indexing the table beforehand with this constraint in mind. If this sounds useful to you, make sure you read the documentation first. It isn't enabled by default on your PostgreSQL database, and you will need to activate the BTree gist extension first. Next on the agenda, we have filter expressions. This comes as a nice quality of life change for conditional expressions. When a conditional expression, such as exists, returns a Boolean value, it can now be used directly in the query filter. Not only does this remove the extra step that was necessary before, which was to annotate this value and filter by the annotation, but it also means that this field will not be added to your select when Django queries the database, reducing unnecessary overhead and ideally speeding up your database transactions. Our last major change is enumerations for model field choices. This change allows you to build a list of choices for a field by defining the type. For example, if you had an enumeration list of choices that were defined by integer values, you would utilize something like this. With this change comes integer choices, text choices, and a general choices class. The general choices class can be used to define a concrete data type that isn't an integer or text. Let's take a look at Django's example here, which uses the datetime.date field to define all of its choices as a date. We can also see in this example our ability to add human readable labels to these strict data type choices. If no label has been set, it will automatically use the member name, such as Apollo 11, Apollo 12, etc. Along with these major changes, Django 3.0 also ships with a bunch of minor features and some backwards incompatibility changes as well. Most of this may not be relevant to you, but it's worth skimming over to see if any of these affect you or if you can utilize a newfound feature uh, to better improve your application. Well, that's pretty much it for our Django 3.0 rundown. The future is looking bright for Django asynchronous support, and I'm very excited to see where it goes. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them down below. I pretty much answer every question. And if you guys like the content, you know exactly what to do. Until next time, my name is Mitchell, and this has been a video.